Still there for England. Relentless attack. McLean on the outside. Thompson for England! What a run by Menage! McLean is scout. But a much flatter ball. Emily Scout! Emily Scout is going to go all the way! Turn over here. Lepesque. Straight back to Amadi. In at first receiver. And now here goes Maya. Go one way and then they come back to the French and an orthodox type of pass to Corson and now Duval. Duval throws the dummy. That's Nissan rather. Nissan, last line of the first what a dummy. Seven shorts. Julie Duval, three shorts. Again out to the left. They've got an advantage. Reaching just a meter short is Anedi. They think about pick and go and then they throw the pass. And Maya scores! France have got their second! Great patience and a great finish! And look at that, the unorthodox options. The dummy went on, she knew that Emba had the wing covered and what that meant going into contact was that they were able to recycle again. One of their forwards took it up. And in the end, Mayan with the try and every one of this team has got great skills. Step. Ball at the back, four metres to make. Still there for England. Another good carry from Burn. Hunt wants to dig one out. Runners outside, carried at the line, and they down England for the try. It's there. It's taken 60 minutes today, but England finally break the deadlock. And it's not pretty either is it but they all count england have been banging on the door they were never going to give it out to the backs they'd set their stall out they were gonna pick and go <laughs> creeping closer and closer to the line that time they set them all up it's the front row driving sarah burn good tackling from jenny murphy again but she can't stop this french movement this french swell in their attack they seem to be able to get through the gears so quickly Amadei stepping in as playmaker Poublon releases Pell up they go into the Irish 22 forwards coming in on the angle led by Daai releases there now for the back line and eye changes direction, gets the offload in to Julie Duval. Stop just short, but the follow-up is good. It's that lady, Caroline Ladanius, her second, France's third. All over the Irish, moving it from one side to the other. That little offload, that deft offload from Poublin to Pell. Then Ndi decides not to release. Wait, pulls in the defence, gets the offload away. And then Ladanu has what? Half a metre to cover to finish the trial. Clean. Scarrett. Emily Scarrett. She's up to the 22. Emily Scarrett. Just dragged down by Baxter. It's a brilliant defensive piece of work from the island winger. England sensing another score here. Burford just has to stop on the pass momentarily. Merchant. Cap Merchant is in for England. Two tries in the space of three minutes for England. This is it for me. England are using Emily Scarrett as an attacking weapon through the midfield. She's so good there, driving through. To date, we've seen her hitting right by the rucks or, or not hitting at all. The ball going really wide. England, for the first time, are hitting up the middle, hitting that 13-15 channel, challenging defences. Moved Island all the way down one side of the pitch, and then moved it out to the speed to the Cat Merchant on the wing. Cat Merchant. The finisher, extraordinaire for England, does it again. Try 44, and this, her 57th cap for England. In the shadow of the island posts. Options left and right, dug out by Tronsky to Le Duf. This time, surely, it has to come. Tremolier! The fullback is over.
Marat, butchering the opportunity less than a minute ago. But Jesse Tremolier gives France the lead with their second try of the game. Well, once again, it's the powerful ball carriers through the middle of this French side. Open up a short side. Just have a look at the numbers stacking up. On the outside, you had Fiona Coughlin, the loose head prop here, with Everett. Very difficult to stop up against the backs. And Tremolier, well, she does well to finish this one. Good to see her running in space. The Duff, well, she's had a couple of good passes since she's come on. Doesn't seem filled into the number 10 spot. And that's what it means. And that's thanks in large part to Karen Pakan, isn't it? What the, her cover defence was just phenomenal earlier on. Good shove from Canada. Up to Waterman. 32 minute mark now in this final. Taylor has played plenty of rugby at number eight. Saw that in the semi-final, it's Burford, lovely pass onto Scout, and here's Wilson, flicks it inside to Katie McLean. Good enveloping tackle by who? Karen Pukwa, Fleetwood, Hunter, now there's space, lovely dummy from Taylor. It's Alfonsi, it's Waterman, it's Danielle Waterman. There's the first try. And it's for England. The ambition pays off. Accuracy to the fore. Set it up really well here. Mo Hunt gets her hands on the ball and it's out to Fleetwood, to Hunter, to Tamara Taylor. Little show and go there for Tamara Taylor. Then Alfonsi and Waterman into the corner. But that's the second time in two games I think we've seen from Tamara Taylor. England's number four, that show and go. But a series of very, very simple two-on-ones from England is what made that try happen. The awareness and the accuracy of those simple passes. River Len, who's played a lot of rugby. She played nearly the whole match in the opener against Japan, and she's still going strong here against the Australians. Interesting to see how all the teams try and rotate their teams here at the Rugby World Cup, playing so many matches in just a short space of time. Back down the French line we come. Big striding run there, coming in from the back row. It's Menage. Oh, she's still going. She's going the whole way. She doesn't need any help. She's over. What a run by Menage. Solo effort, showed the shoulder, went straight through. She was damaging with her runs on the edge in the first 40 minutes, and she shows again why she is so good of a ball runner. See, there are three defenders from Australia, and they don't commit, and she finishes this from deep. A loose foot to be able to run 60 metres, 20 of that was a cross field, and then she straightens up right there. Look at the gas go on. It is very, very impressive. Well, she's an open side that's caused a lot of problems and is causing a lot of damage. And happy to go and find work. From McLean, and they go to the front, to the bank of all, to Rebecca Essex. So now it's England pack. Drive Canada back. That's the 22 metre line. Hunt, McLean, is Scarrett on a much flatter ball. Emily Scarrett! Emily Scarrett is going to go all the way! She has been brilliant all tournaments, mainly with the boot, but just when England need a spark of brilliance, it's Emily Scarrett. So fitting, Emily Scarrett has been such an important player for England in this tournament. For me, she has been one of the standout players of the tournament. Give the ball to Emily Scarrett when they're not sure what else to do here, England. Just give her flat ball. Emily Scarrett says, no, I don't think I can make the kick, but you know what I can do? I can score you a try. Put the ball in my hands and I will power through the defence over the line. Natural fullback. This is Ladanus stepping back inside. Pull down five metres short. The support is there in numbers for France. 
Letitia Grand, the number seven. They're queuing up outside here for France. And they could have this sewn up before the break. Away it goes then from uh, Troncy. The cross field kick finds Lievre. Simple try. Second for Lievre. Third for France. Well worked. But it came initially from the, uh, the line out with uh, the solid run in midfield and Dai, then the recycling. Tracking wheels on the left. Yeah, it's a lovely cross field kick there to finish. Weighted perfectly. And nothing Wales could do. But yes, as you said, when they'd uh, hit their big forwards up in midfield first, sucked in the Welsh defence, created the overlap anyway, but a beautifully weighted kick there by Sagreen Agricole. Well, New Zealand were down to 14, and they have possession again, and it's Matthews again. Another strong don't carry up the midfield. Don't try, don't hold her in. Hunt to McLean. Jones brought to ground by Famo Sealy. Flat pass this time. Hunter drops the head, recycles the ball, and it's slow to come back for the English scrum half. McLean, falling behind, is an overlap on the right-hand side. Burford spots a gap up the middle. Burford for England. Pass inside to Wilson, the dummy. Woodman did just enough to grab the ankle. Still there for England. Relentless attack. McLean on the outside. Thompson for England. Lydia Thompson in the corner. Another English try. Moving the ball into the open spaces. What they did there was pass a ball really deep behind the initial runners, that nullifies New Zealand's blitz defence, Burford got in behind them and then Katie McLean to Lydia Thompson and there is no, well maybe one better finisher, no better finisher than Lydia Thompson. Lydia Thompson with a brilliant finish for England, what a try that was.